Hello Internet. Like many of you have done already, I've made my own DCPU16 assembler and emulator now too. If you don't know what the DCPU16 is, read my video description. The emulator supports keyboard input using the 16 character ring input buffer that Notch seems to use and a 32 by 12 character video output with a 4 bit color palette. The program is written in C++ and it's my first emulator project. Let's have a look at the assembler first. Here's a little simple test program, nothing complicated, it just prints some text to the video output. You can see you can enter some data into the assembler file and it will put it into the program directly. Here's a simple loop to uh, a simple loop which checks if the zero byte at the end of the spring is reached. If it is, the program will stop. If not, it will copy the text from the data uh, memory to the, to the screen, which starts at OX8000 in hexadecimal. All right, let's assemble it. My assembler takes an assembler file like this one and outputs a binary file which is read by the emulator. You can see it's 85 bytes long. It looks like this if you want to read it directly. This is the binary which the emulator will take. So let's run it. I hope I haven't done any mistakes. Yeah, it prints hello world, world and a smiley face to the output. Uh, here you can see the color palette in action. Uh, usually if you just enter some bytes to the video output you get white characters on a black background. But if you change the high byte of the 16-bit word you get colors. I will show more later. So this was just a simple test program and I've made some bigger ones which we will look at now. Here's all the test files I've created. Here's a bouncing ball. Fun to look at, nothing special. Uh, if you press F1 in the emulator you get um, a list of some options. You can, uh, you can dump the contents of the registers and the memory of the DCPU16. So you see what the program is working on. Here are all the registers, what they are pointing to in the memory, and here's the memory of uh, the memory itself. Let's try it on a test program. You can see the contents of the video memory here and the program here. Okay, let's have a look at the more test programs. This program unpacks some packed pixel data from the program memory and prints them to the video output. The source code looks like this. Here's the program and what is shown on the screen is stored here. Every four bits, so every hexadecimal digit stores one pixel and depending on what the digit is you get a different color. You can store a lot of data here and if you press a key, it scrolls. Yay! So, let's continue. Uh, for the video output I have drawn an entire code page, uh, what's it called, 437 with the GIMP image editor, pixel by pixel. It was fun. 
Now this program some of you have seen already, it's Job's program from Arrested Development. It's not my idea, I saw someone on Reddit post a program like this, but I wanted to try for myself. You press Y, this happens. Yeah. This is a bigger program, it was mainly a test for keyboard input. It's sort of a simple terminal or text editor whatever you want to call it. You can enter text, it has a blinking cursor right here, and it supports line breaks as you can see, backspaces and scrolling. That's it. Another bigger program, uh, primes. This program generates prime numbers using the sieve of Eratosthenes. It's actually a pretty fast method but it takes a while while it pre-calculates the numbers and then you can press keys to get the next prime number. Quite fun project. And here's another test for scrolling the video memory. The program always creates a pixel on the right side and then calls a function to move the entire display to the left. So you get a nice pattern like this. Another thing I want to mention, usually the DCPU 16 runs at 100 kilohertz. And um, this emulator on my computer at least can reach up to or even more than 100 megahertz of clock speeds. Right now it won't work but if you change the code a bit, you can get pretty high clock speeds. You can see the clock speed right now, and if you engage turbo mode, it goes up. Right now only to about 10 megahertz, but uh, that's because the video output is slowing it down. All right, I hope I haven't bored you too much with this video. It was quite fun for me programming this emulator and assembler, and I'm really looking forward to this new game that Notch is making. Thank you very much for watching.